Hi everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar channel, and in today's video I will provide a review of the Saru personal finance and budgeting app. So this is part of a series where I review budget apps. The Saru app is a free budgeting system that's available on iOS, Android, and believe it or not, PC software. Based on the way this app looks, I am guessing it started out as a Microsoft mobile app. Um, there is extremely limited information about it online, so I don't really know the history, but that's what the interface looks, looks like to me. In addition, you can sync between devices through a Microsoft login, another giveaway. Um, it has some ads, which you can get rid of by paying a nominal one-time fee. I think it's around $2. The ads are not really a big deal, but a couple times I got into situations where I could not get rid of the app without uh, the ad without killing the app. So in addition to having a throwback interface, Saru embraces a more traditional budgeting philosophy than some of the other envelope-based um, apps on the market. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Okay, so all of that sounded a little dismissive, but Saru has a pretty nice set of features, particularly for a free app. I figured most of it out as I was working with it, but some of the screen organizational structure is still a bit of a mystery to me. After you log on for the first time, you will see that there are five screens represented by icons down at the bottom of the screen, accounts, reports, recurring transactions, regular transactions, and budget. Let's go through these one at a time. Accounts. So this is pretty straightforward, and you can add as many accounts as you want. On the screen, you can see your accounts, but you have to go to a different place in order to add or to edit them. Pull down the menu and click on accounts to do that. So this is what I meant before when I said it had a confusing slash complicated organizational structure. One thing I particularly like, like about this app is its use of colorful pictograms or icons. You can see that I chose some icons to represent each of my accounts. You can do this for budget items as well. Next, let's talk about reports. Again, this is the dashboard for your reports, but in order to configure them, you'll have to go to a different place. Pull down the menu and select reports to configure. So I actually think this series of reports is fairly robust and helpful with actual versus forecasted income and expenses, a breakdown of your spending by budget category, and your income and expense balance for the year. In the configure screen, you can change the settings to produce either a bar or a pie chart, and you can change the date range and the way that, um, that it groups spending. Next, transactions. So at the heart of every budgeting app is entering transactions. If this is hard to do, the budget app is just not worth using. Fortunately, Saru makes this process pretty easy. There are two different kinds of transactions, regular transactions and recurring transactions. The difference is obvious, but note that there are two different entry screens for each one. For regular transactions, the process is straightforward. Here, where it tells you to tap to select category, you will be presented with a list of the default budget categories that Saru automatically populates. To change these, go to the drop-down menu and choose categories. This took me an embarrassingly long time to figure out. It is quick and easy to add, edit, or delete a budget item. One of my favorite things about this app is the ability to add a picture or an icon to the budget category. This makes the process so much faster when you're entering transactions to be able to visually see that. To enter a recurring transaction, go to the recurring, uh, reoccurring transactions dashboard and hit the plus sign. It looks more or less the same, but you also have to add a recurrence frequency and the number of times that it will occur. So this is a nice feature for things like rent or car payments and other items that are the same amount and happen every month or every quarter. In addition, you can see that there is a calendar view to see the payments that are coming up. This gives you a time visualization of when your payments are going to be due. You can see the icon on the day of the month, and if you scroll down, you can set the transaction itself. It's a really nice feature. The last screen is for budget. So as I said before, you set up budget items in the category menu. Sorrow allows you to set up groups of budget items, but I couldn't see too much point in this. You'll have to see how this works for you. First, click on the plus sign in order to add some budget items. As I said earlier, this is not an envelope system. It is a traditional budget system where you are simply reporting on the spending versus the budget goals that you've set previously. Um, you can set each budget line item for weekly, monthly, annually, or other preset timeframes. I don't love this screen. Uh, the budget line items are so big that you need to scroll down practically a full screen to see the next item. 
There is no click through to see transactions for a budget category. Monthly and weekly and other frequencies are all kind of thrown in together and you can't sort them screen manually. Instead, it seems to be sorted by the order of entry. Just a couple of other items. Saru does not seem to have the ability to split a transaction, so you will have to do two transactions um, if that spending falls into two different budget groups. It does have a really nice export function. Um, you cannot export transactions from a specific budget item, but you can select a date range to apply to the export. So I could not seem to find a search function for the transactions, and unfortunately that would be a deal breaker for me. I have way too many transactions to go through one at a time. I'm sure if I had downloaded the PC software, some of the visual issues that I had with the app would be resolved, but I just could not bring myself to install a piece of software on my computer like it was 1995. I was surprised to find to not find much in the way of training or help online considering how robust this app seems to be. In the end, aside from the inability to search, I think this app has the makings of a robust financial reporting app as long as you can figure out the Byzantine net navigation. Let me know what you think. Comments are always appreciated. And thanks for watching.